There can be numerous reasons for someone in Indiana to have their wages garnished, but do you have any options to stop it? Depending on your situation, having your wages garnished could put you in a financial hardship. For example, if someone makes Indiana's minimum wage of $7.25 an hour, and they're now having their wages garnished for a $40,000 debt, that could potentially put them in a hardship where they're now finding themselves considering bankruptcy. Well, all of that to say, I wanna help you understand your options and more. So let's get into it now. Welcome to the Ascend Finance YouTube channel where we cover wage garnishment in Indiana and help folks understand their options to resolve it. With that said, everyone's situation is unique. We get that. So we built a free Indiana wage garnishment calculator to help folks see what their options are to stop it, compare the pros and cons to each option, and estimate the cost based on their personalized data. My name is Justin and I'm one of the analysts here at Ascend. I speak with quite a few folks who are unfortunately facing a garnishment, so I'd love to help you understand the process and options. In today's video, we're gonna cover one, options to stop a garnishment, two, Indiana wage garnishment laws, three, wage garnishment process in Indiana, and fourth and finally, the steps to finding out who is garnishing your wages. I'll also help you at the end kind of understand which option may make most sense. So stay tuned for that. Now, before I dive into the different ways to stop a garnishment in Indiana, I wanna say that if the video ends up being helpful, feel free to leave a like, as it's always encouraging for us to see. Also, if you like seeing more videos like this covering wage garnishment and different options to resolve that in Indiana, feel free to subscribe as we're trying to put out new videos weekly. We understand that you may be feeling overwhelmed and one of the most important things is understanding how to stop it, as it could be debilitating. So we built an Indiana wage garnishment calculator to help you understand A, how much you may be garnished, or B, if you're currently already being garnished, helping you understand whether that's the right amount. And so we want you to be most informed. And so we also lay out a few options to help stop a garnishment. When it comes to stopping a garnishment, there are unfortunately a limited number of options, as at this point, the court has already issued an order for an unpaid debt. However, there are options. So let's consider those and help you understand them now. First, I wanna to touch on filing bankruptcy. So one option to stop a garnishment is filing a bankruptcy. There is the liquidation bankruptcy known as chapter seven, which can help provide immediate relief from a garnishment and any other unsecured debt you may have. Uh, however, though, in order to file a chapter seven bankruptcy in Indiana, you do need to pass the means test. And so what I'm gonna put in the screen now are the income requirements, and those are based on your household size. And so you can see that the current limits for the chapter seven bankruptcy in Indiana now. As you can see, the more people in your household, the larger the income threshold is. But if you're looking for more up-to-date information, you can actually just take our chapter seven calculator. The calculator will help you estimate whether you're able to qualify for a chapter seven and what the cost looks like based on your zip code and personalized data. The chapter seven filing fee in Indiana is $338, but you may be entitled to have it waived if you're under the fee poverty guidelines that I'm gonna put on the screen now. And so you can see what it looks like based on your household size and your income. So. The next option could be an alternative or something you want to try first. That would be filing exemption through the court. You could reach out to the local courthouse to see if you may be eligible for any exemptions. For example, you may be able to file a head of household exemption, which could limit how much they're able to withhold from your paycheck. Now let's go through the Indiana wage garnishment laws. So in Indiana, there should be a limit on the amount of earnings that can be withheld from a single paycheck. Depending on your state, it's generally based on disposable income. I'm gonna go ahead and just put in the description what the laws look like, and that way you can read it and digest it a little bit easier. So now that we've kind of gone through that, I wanna help you understand the process behind it all. Now, when it comes to a wage garnishment, the actual process of it de really depends on the, the type of debt actually being collected, as there's actually potentially specific procedures for garnishing someone age for you know child support or spousal support versus compared to maybe like credit card debt. So with that all said though, the, the process is generally similar across the board for collecting unpaid unsecured debt. So let's kind of get into what the process looks like for reaching at you know a wage garnishment for something like that. Now, the first thing they're gonna have to do is most likely obtain a judgment against you. And so wage garnishments don't happen overnight, right? And so fortunately there are checks and balances put in place to protect both the debtor and the creditor from doing anything with ill intent. So if you are facing a garnishment from let's say the federal government, maybe for like an unpaid student debt, 
The process may look a bit different as they may not need to actually have a court order to withhold your earnings, but nevertheless, let's focus on, you know, regular traditional unsecured debt. So the first step to obtaining a judgment is through a debt collection lawsuit. So the creditor will need to properly serve you for any unpaid unsecured debt. So that's going to probably include credit cards, medical bills, and personal loans, payday loans, of course, and things of that nature. So once you've received the summons, you should see a few things. First, the facts of the case, right? And so you should see a summary of the law, the description of the debt, and the exact amount you, that you owe. And so most times you should actually have about 30 days to respond, but it should stay what that is on the summons. Now, let's say, you know, the creditor has enough documentation to provide sufficient proof, right? And so they have enough proof that you owe the debt. The court name now may issue a default judgment. So with the judgment though, the, the creditor now has the choice to whether they want to pursue further legal action by maybe requesting a wage garnishment order. So that is the next step here in the process is actually obtaining a wage garnishment order. So now that we've actually touched on what it looks like to obtain a judgment, I wanna kind of go through what the next step of it looks like and kind of what it looks like to obtain a wage garnishment order. So as I just alluded to, with the judgment, the creditor is now able to potentially request a wage garnishment order. So here's what that looks like. The first thing is the creditor is going to request a writ of execution from the court. The next thing is there, there's going to be a garnishment packet served to your employer. Now, once the employer has received the garnishment packet, you may actually start to see your wages being garnished probably, you know, in the first paycheck you've received 10 days after the service. So once your employer has received the garnishment packet, you may actually start to see your wages being garnished in the first paycheck you receive. That's about 10 days after the date of being served. And so your employer may need to provide you with a copy of the garnishment order. And so you should be able to challenge this order, but you may only have around 10 days to ask for any potential exemptions. Now, Sometimes folks are not even aware that they are being garnished, who's garnishing, or what the balance is for, and for many, many reasons, unfortunately. So before I go too much further, I wanna help you figure out where to go if you either don't know who's garnished your wages or you're not sure the balance they're garnishing you for. I've actually spoken with more and more folks who have unfortunately been caught off guard by a recent garnishment from their wages. Most times they're first hearing about it from being notified by their employer or they, they just noticed a portion of their paycheck was being taken out. And so if you do fall into this category, I want to help you understand a few simple steps that, that may help you actually answer those questions and, and get a little bit more understanding. Of course, if you already know who's garnishing your wages and the total balance, feel free to skip to the next part here, more covering your options to resolve it as well that I touched on earlier. But if you don't know who's garnishing your wages or what the balance is, you know, here are some steps to take if, if you need more information. So one, one step could be, you know, it, it's depending on everyone's situation, but one step could be reaching out to payroll and seeing if they have any information on who submitted the garnishment order. Most likely them or, or someone within your employer has information or the documents that they were served. Now, once you know who is garnishing your wages, uh, you should be able to call them directly to get the information on the balance. So once you have an idea of the law firm that's handling the account, you could potentially reach out to them and get an idea of the balance, when it started, how much they want, if there's any offers to resolve. Or if, if that doesn't work for any reason, you could potentially reach out to the courthouse and see if they're able to look up your case. If you call the local courthouse, they may have the case information regarding the judgment and the garnishment issued. Of course, there's no promises on any of these, but those could be options to explore. Now, if both of those options don't work, you may be able to check your credit report and see if there's any outstanding debts that it may be in relation to. So if you have a medical bill from eight, four years ago that is in collections and you haven't paid on it and your wages are being garnished and you look in the credit report and you see there's a medical bill in collections, well, it could be that, but you know, those are things to, to check out. Now, the multiple question here is which options should you do? Now, with all that to say, you know, ultimately it's up to you. However, I would encourage you to take our wage garnishment calculator as that'll help you compare your options, the cost, the pros and cons to handling a potential garnishment. As I do understand that it can be overwhelming, you're, you're always welcome to give us a call or text at 833-272-3631 and we'd be happy to chat through your situation. I do hope that this video was helpful, but if you do have any questions at all, feel free to leave a comment down below as I am sure there are others with a similar question. We will do our best to get back to you as soon as possible. However, thanks so much for watching and I'm always here if you have any questions.